This is another episode of Verification Corner. Today we're going to look at refinement, which is a technique of writing programs where you start with a higher level description of what your, what your program is supposed to do, and then you gradually refine the program into a more efficient one that, does it, uh, that performs a task in the way that you'd like it to be performed. Let's take a look. Verification Corner All right, here we are. Uh, let me introduce to you uh, my, um, uh, my research intern this summer, uh, Kwat Yesenov. Hi, I'm Kwat. I'm a PhD student at MIT, and I've been here in intern for the summer. And you've been working on refinement. So what is refinement all about? So refinement is one way to write correct programs. And uh, I'll try to show it, actually, to you, because it's a very nice way of driving programs that are correct during construction of the program. Great. Let's, um, let's take a look. Yeah, so the example we're going to look at is, is a very simple program exercise. We're given a sequence of uh, integers, and we'd like to find whether there are two integers in the sequence that are equal. So let's start writing this. So in Site Visual Studio, we can define a class, call it duplicate zero, and we would like to give a signature for our method. So we have a method called find, It will take a sequence of integers as its input. So we have an S that is of type sequence of integers. And it's going to return to us a Boolean. So we would like this method to do the following. It's, it's going to check whether there are two numbers in this sequence that are equal. So if you, at this level of abstraction, we don't want to deal into technical details how we're going to implement this using loops or whatever kind of data structures we'd like to have. So we're just going to write directly what we want to have. And we're going to use specification statement for that. A specification statement? What is that? So let's see. Let's just write down what kind of specification statement we would use in this case. Mm -hmm. So the spec specification statement here would mean something like this. So we'd like to s update B in a way such that B is going to be equal to basically whatever predicate we'd like to have. In this case, it's going to be checking whether there is a number in this sequence, S, so we give an index from 0 to length of s, such that the element in this sequence at, uh, uh, s at i-th index belongs to the prefix of this sequence up to i-th. Uh -huh. So if it belongs to the prefix, that is, if it exists also before index i, then it exists uh, twice or more times in the, mm -hmm. in the sequence. Exactly. So s uh, to column i means uh, all elements from 0 to i minus 1. Mm -hmm. So if si belongs to those elements, it means there is some element from 0 to i minus 5 that is equal to si. Mm -hmm. So here you have an exist. That doesn't look like uh, something my compiler is going to want to compile. Yeah, but it's, it's correct. Because it it, correct. what it gives to us is basically the program at our sort of level of understanding. Because it, 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 you cannot execute this, unfortunately. The compiler is not smart enough to derive the full implementation for this. But it, it shows us it is correct because it's basically just one line of specification that we put there. Hmm. So what we've written down here then is, the, is what we want the program to do, but we haven't described uh, to the compiler yet how we want the, the code to be executed, how, how it's going to do this. Yeah, so at this level we know what we want to have, but we don't know how. So let's continue. All right. So we're going to define another class. We will call it duplicates1. And we're going to declare this class to be a refinement of duplicate 0. So we say, so class duplicates 1 refines duplicate 0. And it's also going to declare the same method, find, that takes uh, a sequence of integers, s, and returns a boolean, b. But this method is going to be a refinement of method find in duplicate 0. So we're going to say refines, find. So we have a body. And here we can start actually writing down what the actual algorithm for this task. So let's think a little bit. So if you would like to find duplicates in a sequence, presumably you would like to have some kind of a loop. You would like to look at every single element one by one, and for every single element at each iteration, you would like to check whether you already saw it or not. Mm -hmm. 
So let's start. So we will probably have, gonna have some looping variable. Let's call it i. Or let's actually call it uh, m because we used i. And uh, let's make it zero because it's, we're gonna start from the beginning of the sequence instead of end. And also, so let's do that. So we have n, and we'd like to look at all elements between zero and length of s. So we're gonna have some while loop, mm -hmm. and we're going to provide a looping variant here that will tell us that this n actually ranges from 0 to s at every iteration. So let's write it down. Mm -hmm. So we have a looping variant that says that 0 is less than or equal to n, and s is less than, length, less than or equal to length of s. Mm -hmm. So for those of you out there who are unfamiliar with loop invariants, uh, there are other episodes of the uh, verification corner that explain those. So check those out, too. Yeah, so that's the basic uh, skeleton of this program. So now we see this uh, squiggly line on the var, which tells us that this, this piece of code doesn't really define the previous one. So it's not correct. Because we didn't even update b at any moment in time. So how are we going to update this? So first of all, we'd like to check at every iteration whether the element si was in the prefix. So let's use specification statement for that. So we're going to have a boolean c. And we're going to say that C is true whenever SI was in the prefix. I'm beginning to really like this specification statement. Yeah, it makes your job very easy. Just say what you want. You don't have to say how. Mm -hmm. And you can delay this how to later stages. Okay, so we get some complaint, and it says that variable i is not declared. Yes, of course, because there is no i, um, I in range, so it must be n here. That's right. That's yeah. cool. It's very useful to have a compiler running in the background that also verifies programs. Mm -hmm. We still get complained because we need to update B. So how are we going to update B? So this C is going to be true whenever SN is already is, is a duplicate. So it's, it's actually some weakness for the fact that there is a duplicate in sequence. So we, we have to set B to true whenever C happens to be true. And we can do it very simply if we say that B is equal to B or C. But of course, we need to give some initial value to b because we didn't even declare b anyway before. Mm -hmm. So initially, we probably want to set b to false, meaning that we don't yet assume that there are any duplicates. So let's start with basic the mm -hmm. initial value. So when we have looked at zero elements, we have not yet found any duplicates. Exactly. So it starts off false. That seems good. All right. So right now, we get um, may not satisfy specification setting post condition. So let's think why. Uh, so the verifier is, is complaining. So we're using the yes. verifier in the background, and we have a program that uh, seems pretty good, but it doesn't, um, doesn't verify it. Maybe um, it doesn't know anything about B after the loop. Oh, yeah. Exactly. So, but it, so what happened here is that uh, even though we know, after the loop, the only thing we can assume about this uh, loop is that the, the loop invariant. Mm -hmm. And the only thing we know is that this n must be basically the last element. Excellent. We haven't done anything to our b. So we need to provide another loop invariant here. That's going to tell us that b is actually true whenever there exists some uh, index i in a range from 0 to n, such that s i is in s. Um, so essentially what it says is that we happen to look at the prefix of this sequence and once we go on we sort of grow this prefix but once we happen to find the witness in this prefix we should keep it uh -huh. and this is exactly what it says so that invariant looks a lot like the specification in duplicate zero so yes. when uh, little n at the end of the loop is equal to the length of s we indeed have the, the condition that we want exactly and so what does the yeah. verifier think? Verify is happy, which means this nice. program is correct. Terrific. Okay, so, but we still unfortunately cannot run this program because we still have a specification statement. Mm. So how, what do we do now? So we do now again the same thing we, we did before. So we, we, we define a new class to call duplicates2. That we declare to be refinement of duplicates1. And now we would like to give the final um, implementation of this simple program exercise. So we're going to say there is a same uh, method called find that takes a sequence of integers and returns a boolean. But now we're going to use a different kind of refinement, which is called transform. Hmm. 
But first of all, uh, before we go into details about how this transform works, let's f think a little bit how we can actually implement this specification statement. So this specification statement um, basically checks whether SN is, all, is in this prefix. And we could do it with a loop again, mm -hmm. basically by looking at every element from 0 to n minus 1 and checking whether SN equals to that one. Mm -hmm. But we can also do it much better. And, but we, cannot, this, we can do it much better if you know the bounds on these numbers. Oh. So we can replace this specification statement. Instead of using a loop, we can use a direct constant time lookup in a table. That, that will basically good. keep all the values that were present in the sequence. Uh -huh. But in that case, don't we have to modify the the description of the of the problem to say that that we expect the sequence to to have only bounded integers in some way? Right. So we need to give a additional precondition in fine method hmm. that will allow us to assume certain facts about the sequence. Okay. So let's, for example, um, make the bound between zero and hundred. It doesn't really. I mean what kind of uh, bound it is, just must be constant. So let's say that all numbers in this sequence are actually between 0 and 100. So if you add a precondition to find, this should not uh, change correctness of find. Mm -hmm. So we basically made the precondition stronger. We can assume more than we, than we need to. Mm -hmm. There will be an additional check for callers, but for the verification right. that we're building right now, there's no difference. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we get the duplicate 0 and duplicate 1 are still verified. Nothing really changed. But now we can use this fact in duplicates 2. Mm -hmm. So how we can use it? So first of all, we would like to add a new declaration here. We would like to have a new, new kind of data structure that will serve as a lookup table at each iteration. Uh -huh. So that uh, data structure we didn't need to think about before. Before we could use uh, the specification statement and more abstract descriptions of the problem, but, but it is now that you're thinking about the representation of, of the data structure. Right. So mm -hmm. we want, we'd like to give some concrete representation that's actually efficient in this case. Excellent. So let's do that. Let's declare a new um, variable. Let's call it, uh, say, I don't know, t. Well, uh, let's call it set actually. It's mm -hmm. going to be meaningful. And we'll make it a sequence of booleans. Okay, so you can see here this underscore. So what does it really mean? So this underscore is a pattern, mm -hmm. but instead of uh, matching expressions, it matches statements in an abstract program. And where does it match them from? So it matches them in duplicates one. Uh -huh. So this transform basically takes this duplicates one find over here, and it scrolls over these two statements and insert this additional statement after these two statements. Excellent. So this uh, uh, transform, the pattern uh, language here, is, is a way to more or less insert code into or replace code in a, in a previous implementation. Right, because we, don't, we still don't want to completely change the structure. We want to preserve some kind of uh, existing statements and uh, looping loops and if conditions. Mm -hmm. And that way we don't have to rewrite all of the code or copy it. We can just um, say which things we're changing. Right, so we can localize our changes. Mm -hmm. Only certain pieces of program should change. Great. Yeah. So let's go back to duplicates too. Um, so it complains because we didn't say anything about while. Should we keep while or should we change it? So let's say something more. Mm -hmm. So it's going to have a while loop here now. And we can also change the, this uh, specification statement at this point in time. We can say that uh, we can replace that C with a different um, check. So what we're replacing now is the specification statement in the while loop in the method that we're transforming. Right. So if you go back, just to make sure we remember it, there's a specification statement here that says that uh, C becomes true whenever SN belongs to S up to N. Ah. Mm -hmm. And that's the yeah. one we're replacing. Yes, we would like to change this. So how are we going to change this? Well, since we decided to use uh, this uh, bit set variable as a, as a basic lookup table, we can just directly look, look it up. We can say C is essentially a lookup in this bit set at index S n. Mm -hmm. and, uh, bar, does that declare a new variable, or is that the same as the other one? So this declares a variable C, but it's actually the same one as in the abstract program. Uh -huh. So it sort of redeclares the same variable and okay. uses the new one as a replacement for the previous one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's, that's the reason for re replaces construction. 
Okay, so now what we're gonna do? So we're gonna skip the previous statements by putting this underscore. So we still. Uh, okay, now we get complaints. So the compiler doesn't like this. And the reason is it cannot really tell anything about bitset. Like it, it doesn't know that bitset is actually a lookup table. We didn't communicate this to the compiler. Mm -hmm. So how are we gonna do this? So in our mind, we we think of bitset as sort of a sequence of booleans. That every time that we encounter SI, we hit this uh, uh, slot in this table at position SI. So it becomes from if it was false, it becomes true. Uh -huh. Right. So we need to uh, show we tell tell this to the compiler that think of this bit set as a lookup table that consists of uh, booleans, that each of them being the indicator whether that number is actually in sequence. Mm -hmm. So first of all, let's start with the initial value of bit set. So initially, we haven't seen any number. So we want to have a numbers, so the bit set must consist of all falses. Mm -hmm. And we can, again, use a sketching statement here. We're just going to say bit set is uh, just uh, 100, 100 somethings, and all of these elements in this sequence are falses, which I can say by saying that 2 is not there, mm -hmm. which is a shortcut way to do it. All right, so we have the initial value. But now it still cannot prove it because it doesn't know what we th what things we maintain during loop invariant. Mm -hmm. So we need to provide a loop invariant. First of all, we need to say that the uh, length of sequence doesn't change. So it's if it was hundred, it's still hundred. Then we probably want to say that the, the previous fact that every time we encounter a number in the sequence, we would like to keep the boolean value the corresponding slot to be true. So we can say this as follows. So we like to say that for all numbers between um, uh, well, for every element in the prefix of the sequence, so we, look, we would like to look at range from 0 to n, we want to say that um, the bit set at position si is true. Mm -hmm. That's saying that, um, that we've already recorded in bit set uh, the fact that we've seen si, the number uh, stored in si. Exactly. But you also want to, to say the reverse fact. The fact that uh, everything that bitset contains true is actually being seen. Uh -huh. So we need to provide the reverse one. So we would like to say that for every number between, for every basically value in this um, sequence, whenever bitset is uh, turned on, mm -hmm. it means J was, must be in this sequence. Mm -hmm. So those two invariants are a little bit like an if and only if. Yes, we perhaps we could write it down in different form when we could uh, um, write down it as an if and only if. Mm -hmm. This looks good. There's a typo there, we put one dot instead of two. All right, it still doesn't verify. So what could be the reason? Well, if you can see, we didn't really do anything to bit set in the loop. No. So we actually have to update it at some point. And how are we gonna do this? So we just told that every time we encounter as n, we would like to change the value of bit set at position as n to true. Mm -hmm. So let's do that. So we're going to say bit set becomes a new value. It's going to consist of the prefix of the sequence bit set before up to as n. We're going to change it to true. Mm -hmm. And we're going to keep the previous values starting from as n plus 1. So what you're doing here is you're essentially um, adding one more bit to the, to the bit set. Exactly. And that's done uh, with... Um, with sequence concatenation in this case. Yes, mm -hmm. right. so we essentially Good. update uh, S N mm -hmm. in this sequence. Great. Okay, so we get a complaint. Might not evaluate to true. So let's think again, what happened? So in this case, the environment that breaks is uh, this one. It says that for all numbers from zero to 100, the bit set is true. If bit set is true, then J must be in this prefix. Hmm? Um. And is it complaining that that invariant does not hold initially, or that it is the, the loop that's not maintaining it? So the loop does not maintain it. So uh -huh. perhaps we didn't update bit set correctly. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Oh, oh yeah, I guess I was using the wrong initial value in the prefix. I was using it from 0 to n instead of uh -huh. up to n. All right, so now we have no complaints, hmm. which means that this program is correct. So that is the final program now. Um, so we've uh, 
we've seen three versions of the program. Uh, if we want to see the abstract version, which was just one line and the specification statement, we can go look at that. And then in the next one, you introduced a loop, but you did not yet introduce the, the data structure. Um, and in the final version, the, the data structure was added to, um, in this case, a, a, a bit array or bit sequence. Um, and what do we do with this? Can we, um, um, do we now have to rewrite this program in C to compile it, or uh, could one imagine compiling it from here on? Well, you can actually compile it from this point on, because what you can do, you can tell the compiler, derive the final version of this mm -hmm. duplicates. And what it's going to do is it's going gonna, gonna to change my duplicates one using this transform, and give me a, a program that has no transforms, mm -hmm. has no ma pattern matching. It's just basically like a normal uh, chalice program. Mm -hmm. So and that means... We've gone from the from the high level specification, uh, the description of what the method is supposed to do, to compile code in the, in the sequence of steps. Right. So we broke down our task into sequence of steps, and we actually made several important design decisions on the way. Like we didn't know we were going to use a bit set initially. Mm -hmm. Great. That looks good, doesn't it? <laughs>to summarize what we've seen, refinement is a way that, that you don't start writing the, the low-level bits of your program right away, but instead you, th you think about what the program is going to do and you, uh, in, in a step-by-step -step fashion, introduce more details uh, like the data structures and the algorithms that you're going to use. Uh, there's been a lot of work on refinement. Um, the mathematical underpinnings of it um, was given by Ralph Buck, and there's a beautiful theory behind, um, behind refinement. Uh, there have been other tools and specification statements and, uh, and so forth. And what we've shown here is uh, putting refinement into the setting of, of a program where we write something like a sequential program and the verifier runs in the background the whole time as we're, as we're verifying the program. Uh, this has been Verification Corner. I'm Rustin Leno. I'm Kwate Sema. Program safely. <laughs>